right, you guys, we are back to Behind the Bikini episode 22. You too. <laughs> I feel at peace. Um, so today we're going to talk about staying on track uh, when your life is a little chaotic, because both of us have had some, some issues with our lives being a little chaotic, have we not? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that would be an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just a little. So, just a little um, bit. I'll kind of start. I'll start on this one. I'm not going to go into a ton of details, but um, so last week when we were filming this, uh, before we even hit record, I said uh, I may have to run because my husband is, Dan is not feeling great. And uh, well, right after the podcast, things went downhill real quick and um, went into a situation where he had to go into emergency surgery that evening. And uh, so it's been a week since he's been out of emergency surgery, but um, that's how quickly your life can go from being normal to not normal. And then he ends up staying in the hospital all week and all that kind of stuff. And um, it was one of those things where it, it never should have gotten to that point. So we talk about the emotions that went through this too. It was something very, very simple that should never have gotten this far and never been that, that big of a problem, but it got to the point where it actually, if he had let it go much longer, could have killed him. So uh, it was, yeah, it was, um, it was, it was, it was a rough, it was a rough few days because you have these, these emotions of like, and I'll be honest, I was mad at him because I'm like, I'm like, I've been telling you to take care of this forever and like it never needed to get this far. But at the same time, I was like, I was happy he was okay. So it's like, you know, you're, 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 you're fighting all these emotions and, you know, I'm at the point now where I'm, I'm very happy that he's okay. He's home, he's recovering, all those kinds of things. So I'm, I'm happy, but you have to deal with, with a lot of uh, ups and downs. And we just gone through this big, huge high of CCTS and, and by the way, my freaking phone and Facebook and Instagram and email, they're all blowing up with people that want to come next year. Um, so if you guys haven't seen it yet, we're actually doing a super early bird <laughs> ticket launch. We didn't plan on doing that, but the the, the response was so overwhelming that we're like, okay, I, I, we'll, we'll put it out there because people came up, you know, have been coming nonstop about, can I get tickets for next year? So yeah, and um, I was at the list seminar for that, this I'll... past weekend and everyone's like, oh my gosh, like I want the tickets, da, da, da. It's, mm -hmm. finally at a, it's finally at a price point I can afford, blah, blah, blah. Yep. I'm like, where is Sean right now? <laughs> 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 Yeah, and that's and that's the thing too. So if you get in on the super early bird, it will be uh I won't say the best pricing because a bunch of girls that were at CCTS twenty twenty four, they bought their tickets there, they got the best pricing. Um, but the super early bird will be in the next step up from there. And then once we go to early bird in September, like we always do, uh that'll be the next step up from there. So the good thing about getting in on it now is that you can, A, you can get a cheaper price, but B, you can go on the payment plan if you want to, too, and you've got all year to pay it off. Oh, so that's nice. Have, yeah, so you don't have to feel like you have to, like, plunk the whole thing down at one point for the ticket. So Cool. Um, so that that launches Tuesday. So I'll put the link in the, the description box for that so you can get onto the, the waiting list for that and, and jump on that so that you're not kicking yourself next year because we had a lot of people we had a lot of people kicking themselves <laughs> yeah. send me the link too because i'll put it in my link tree and then cool. because like all my girls are asking about it so i'll put it on my link tree on instagram and send it to them too because i know Perfect. all the team j girls wants to be up there next year that too. it's it's also in my link tree on instagram on both Perfect. my personal and my sean's couture account too it's in there so they can check that out too Perfect. Um, if you can't find it, you're not looking for it. Basically, <laughs> you're not looking hard enough. Come next Tuesday. Exactly. Yep. Um, but yeah. So anyway, so we got it. We got through that whole big high of that weekend, and you know, we were like bottling over last week when we were doing this podcast and all this kind of stuff, and then just go to an extreme low directly after that. <laughs> it was just like literally. Uh, yeah. It was. It was. It was rough. It was very yeah. rough. Um, you know, and then it was like perfect timing. Jamie had actually, my coach Jamie, your coach Jamie, had actually texted me about my wanting my address, and I think that was probably for you. <laughs> she wanted me to figure out that was what it was. It was like a roundabout way. I knew, I knew she. I was like, that's not the way to do it. Whatever. <laughs> I figured it was probably for you. I was like, I should just email Angela. <laughs> <laughs> but with that said, it worked out because then I had her attention. I was like, "Can I check in on Friday instead of Thursday?" Because I got some, I got some shit going on, and uh, and yeah, she was she was good with that. So you know, going back to that was that's one way that you can kind of cope with with things going crazy is communicate with your coach. Yeah. Um, I knew I was going to be in the emergency room all night, and I knew that it was going to be really not a good idea to check in the following day. So I was like, okay, this is per that was perfect. I was like, now that I got your attention, I was like, do you mind if I check in on Friday instead of Thursday, you know, and it, and it worked out well. So I was still, you know, 
I was actually only like I was a, a couple of points of a pound up from the the week prior as far as my weight was concerned. But you could see like the te- the stress on my body. You could see how inflamed I looked and all of that kind of stuff. And it's just like that's why you know we go back to weight is not the be all end all because um, my weight was actually not higher, you know. But um, but I could tell I was just like you could just see I was inflamed from from the stress and all of that. So you know. Um, Again, everything's back to normal now. Now Dan just has to recover, and it's going to take about six weeks. So hopefully, I can get him to not go too far too fast because he 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 trains too. He was an athlete too, and I got to keep him out of the gym, and I got to keep him from doing anything that's going to strain, you know, the the surgery incision points and all those kinds of things. And it's just like, so it's like a whole other thing. Like even last night I got into it with him because he was trying to do laundry and he like hurt himself trying to pull laundry out of the, I was like, just ask for help. I was like, I will do it for you. Just ask for help. You know, so stuff like that. I did so, that after my breast augmentation, I was going in and I was like going into the washer to yes. like get all the little stuff. And I like felt it. And Drew was like, you're not supposed to be doing laundry right now. I'm like, well, you're not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's exactly what Dan thought too. And here's the thing. So I, I always go back, like when we were first together, I did his laundry one time and I did it wrong. So yeah, now you're fired. <laughs> fired. I was fired. Yeah. I can never do his laundry again. So I was exactly. like, all right, whatever. <laughs> For those that don't know, my husband is very OCD and uh, he needs things specifically perfect. Like he, he, he organizes his clothes and, and colors and like in the closet. So it's, it's I love that man. Colors, things I love like that. that. <laughs> so, you know, I was wrong. I was wrong in how I did it, how I folded his laundry. So he's I like, okay, again. you're not cooking anymore. You don't get to do the laundry. That's right. Sean, you haven't made girl. You just get to be a boss bitch. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, all right. All right I'll just you take, you do you. I'll do me. It's all good. It works. Yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, I can't say I didn't try. I'm like, no. but you know, uh, I'm like, all right. But anyway, okay. <laughs> it goes back to, you know, I, I, it's, it's one of those things like I, just ask me for help. And again, it's just a stressful thing. Like I want to make sure he doesn't hurt himself again, push right. himself too hard, too fast. I know his personality. He will push himself too hard, too fast. So, you know, those kinds of things. Um, we all uh, have yeah. that personality. I would I too. Know. And I'm sure you would too. <laughs> Oh, I did. I mean, that's, again, that's, we talked about this before, with, like last episode with my breast augmentation, yep. the hematoma and all that crap. I, I mean, I did that. That's why I got COVID last year because I went and I had flu and I went back to the gym too quick, you know? Yeah. You guys, so, <laughs> so we're all guilty. We're all we're guilty. guilty. We're yep. all guilty. We're all guilty. We're support each other and ring each other back. <laughs> yep. hundred percent. So, um, the good news is, is I have him on video saying I was right and that he needs to listen to me forever now. So I, anytime, <laughs> anytime make that, copies of that, uh-huh. send it to all your witnesses. That's right. Yep. I, he's got a copy. I sent it to my family. You've yep. got a copy. I've got a copy. <laughs> I was dying. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I have the copy. <laughs> I know. I know. You're, my, you're like, my, you're my, my iCloud. You're my backup. Yep. <laughs> witnesses. Witnesses. <laughs> Correct. That's right. Drew said Drew was training with one of his like training partners yesterday in the gym, and he said something like to the extent like I was right or something, and I'm like, witness, witness. Oh, I didn't God. get it on film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, if see if security cameras have it, you know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. Pull the footage. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So life's been a little bit chaotic. Now, how has your life been chaotic? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, life life has been really chaotic too, like always. I feel like I'm just like never getting a break here. But um, so we did our first big trip. I went to CCTS and then I went from CCTS to Tampa, if, ever, if anyone can follow all this. Then I was in Tampa for the week and then we went from Tampa to Orlando for the women's seminar. I was there for 24 hours. Then I went from Tampa to Miami for my sister-in-law's baby shower. And then I got a phone call from the boarding place that my dogs were at that they contracted that dog RSV that's going around on the news right now. Uh, So they were really sick and they were like, so like, when can you get back? And I'm like, "Um, I will try to get there tonight. So we ended up booking a a late flight um, from the baby shower. And at the same time, I started developing another ocular migraine. So Mm. yeah, so it's, and it's around the same time as last month too. So I think it's menstrual cycle related. Mm. Interesting to kind of put those things together. I really think that my body's trying to throw the period right now. So 
things just feel like ah, crazy. And so now that we're back in Arizona, this is like when we moved here, I was only here for 10 days before I went on that trip to CCTS. So it didn't really feel like we got like settled. Yeah. So now I have no big plans until uh, the end of April. I don't think okay. I'm traveling until April. So hopefully I can just, you know, be here for a couple months, get chill, get settled. My dogs yeah. are home. Everybody's fine now. Oliver, my big guy, lost about four pounds, which oh. is a lot for him. And yeah. he's kind of lethargic and he's he's just not right. His nose is really dry. So just keep an eye on him. But oh. Everyone is finally settled, but the stress is real. And I hold stress a lot, like in my body, just like yeah. you. And I got home and my weight was up like seven pounds and then yeah. slowly going back down now that I'm home. But it's, you know, it's important to make sure that you're communicating that with your coach, you know, like, like you said with Jamie, like saying, Hey, mm -hmm. like I need a day to check in or a different day. And, you know, yeah. I'm sure she allowed that. I yep. would too. Oh so yeah. Me, you know, um, and even a simple, like, Hey, I just can't, check in this week. I can't do the whole thing, but here's where I'm at. Here's the synopsis, yeah. like kind of that, Hey, I'm here. This is the communication, but I just don't have time. Like that's, that's okay with me too. It, you know, with, with a very busy situation like yours, that was an emergency, like whatever. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's just important to kind of, you know, find the balance and find what's going to de-stress you. Like if I would have stayed in Miami one more night, I think I would have hit my limit if yeah. I wasn't home. So I just needed to get back and home. And I felt so much better once I was here. And it's just kind of knowing how to manage that stress. And that's such a big word, stress management, right? Like your coach will say in your check-in, like, make sure you manage your stress. Like, what does that even mean? Like, some things we yeah. have control over, some we don't. You know, it's just about kind of finding what you know makes you calm and makes you feel better and trying to invest in those things if you can during that time. It's really difficult, though. Yeah. Well, and I, you mentioned the thing about your dog. Like, it's it's funny because I thought that Dolly hurt herself last week. So we had a ton of snow. Um, you know, for, for Virginia, four inches is a ton of, ton of snow. Ton you of know snow, what I mean? Yeah. But um, so, like, it had packed down to become ice, right? And I left them out to go to the bathroom the one night. And this is while Dan's in the hospital. So I'm, I'm, I'm home by myself. I left them out to go to the bathroom. And Dolly can't get back up the stairs to come inside. And I'm like, no, I'm like, this is not happening right now. Like she couldn't, she couldn't jump up the stairs. I was like, what is going on? She wasn't putting weight on her back foot. I was like, what did she do? You know, cause I just let him out. I wasn't paying attention. I let him out. I pulled up the security camera, see if I saw anything, but you know, dogs don't come up on security camera. Only people do. So I didn't, <laughs> so, so I couldn't see, yeah, exactly. So I couldn't see what she did. And all I could, all I could see was that she couldn't put weight on her back left foot and I was like oh my god she didn't just freaking hurt herself she's a wiener dog you know they they have issues with their back they have issues with their knees you know those kinds of things and I was like did she just hurt herself I was like what did she do so I went out there <laughs> I came up with the security camera I go out there with my freaking my pjs my no shoes on no socks on the ice to go pick her up I'm like what did you do oh my god and I go and pick her up and I pull her inside and she she runs to her her little hut her little playpen right but she won't put weight on the back foot as she's running. So she's running with three legs. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> Am I really going to the emergency vet now? I, no, I was like, I and I couldn't go to the emergency vet because I can't get out of my house because oh, of because the freaking snow. snow. Oh my so I'm God, like, what a nightmare. Yep. So I'm like, all right. So I called Dan on FaceTime and I was like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I was like, so he's in the hospital on FaceTime. And I'm like, I think Dolly hurt herself. I was like, I don't know what to do. I'm dead. So, I was like, fuck. I was like, what did I do? What, did, what do I do? What do I do? So I think what happened, I don't know for sure. Cause again, I didn't see, but you know, she was in the snow and she's a long hair wiener dog and she's got a lot of, she gets the snow stuck in her fur. So I think what happened is I think she actually got her paw stuck in her fur, like with the snow and the ice and she couldn't get it out because okay. once I got her, because once I got her in the house, she went into her hut. She was in there for a couple of minutes and she came out and she's walking fine. So I Thing. Like and pulled again, it I, all out. Yeah, I think yeah. I think what happened is she got her foot stuck. That's what I think happened. And I'm just like, because I've been watching ever since, and she hasn't hurt. She hasn't hasn't had a problem. She's so fine. I'm like, I was like, you're just being. And Dan says this all the time. She's a drama queen. I was like, she's just being a drama queen. I said she just wants attention. <laughs> I was like, because then because you know again, she does have the name Dolly. She does. She does. Yes. Yes. It's okay. So, you can have some drama. <laughs> that's right. And um, so because because then she like stayed in her hut the rest of the night, and I'm like, you're walking fine. There's nothing wrong with you. Like what? You, now you're just playing on. You're just playing on the sympathy now. <laughs> yes. Pretty much. <laughs> it's like Jesus.
I'm like, if it's not one thing, it's another, man. I'm like, I don't. <sighs> so then you like, had the snow on top of it. So now yes. your husband's in the hospital. Your dog's probably, you know, hurt. And then you can't get out of my freaking neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. It was like, so we had, uh, we had a guy come out and, and shove the driveway. That's the other thing too. Like we don't even have, we're not even like equipped for this. Right. Because it's, we've been in this house for two years and we have a shovel. And if those of you that have seen my driveway, a shovel is not going to do it. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's just nope. not. No. Nope. So, so we hired a guy to come out and do it. And then we also bought like the icer pellets and stuff. And uh, so we, we got two buckets, two 20 pound buckets. That's so 40 pounds of this de icer stuff. And so he put all that stuff on the driveway. And he's like, your driveway is so long. You need double that amount. <laughs> We're like, okay, great. So like half of our driveway still had ice all over it. I ended up going, like we have the salt pellets for our, we have, we have well water and all that kind of stuff. So we have the salt pellets for that. So I ended up using that to go onto the ice. Paper. That was smart. That it was worked. Smart. That's all we had. Because we went to go order more de-icer and stuff. And it, it's all back ordered because everybody, you know, obviously bought it. Up. So there's none of that. There's no rock salt. There's, you can't get any of that here. None of it. So I'm like, right. like Virginia's, Virginia's not even equipped for this. They're it's like, not. Yeah. It's not. That's the problem. Like the, it's not that there's so much snow is that we don't have the ability to get rid of what the we resources. have. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, even like my, my cul-de-sac where I live, when we got the first snowstorm that you guys saw, we didn't actually get that iced until like Tuesday. So like or like salted like they didn't so, have the they didn't, so yeah two to three well it it was snowing Saturday so three days later right wow wow right nobody came like the the city didn't come and put the salt down on that on our cul de sac until Tuesday you know so, what's funny is when I was leaving the Ritz <clears throat> uh, Monday morning yeah. The, uh, it was beautiful. It was like six in the morning. Yeah. No, no cars had driven on it yet. However, in the median, there was a car that was already, yeah. um, whatever, like Slid over off. the median. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And then yep. my Uber driver was like sliding around and he was like, there is no salt on this road right now. And he was like, this is like a really nice area. Like they should have salt. And I was like, I'm from Florida. I don't, I don't know anything about this. So he yeah. was complaining about that too but that makes sense absolutely and the same thing because i left when i left the ritz that day normally what i do on monday after the the posing clinic is i stick around i go to the spa and i hang out at the pool but i was like with the snow i was like i don't really want to stay here and have to drive home when it's dark you right. know what i mean you want to so, get home yeah so i just packed up everything and actually i took uh Devin to the airport and so she's in the car with me and i'm sliding back and forth as i'm trying to get the, she's like this is scary i was like yeah it is <laughs> like i'm like it's because they just they haven't done anything and it's like right. It, and it wasn't the snow it was like it was like this the, no it was point, thin it was, yeah, yeah 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 but, but it's it all was, you need black it, ice i mean you're mm -hmm. just you're done yeah yeah so yeah. anyway so that there was that so then once i was home you know again on top of all of this like i'm like i, I have the, the the gym in the back and the shed so i'm just like i'm just gonna go train there because there's no point in risking going to the gym but also i'm sitting there for you know three days waiting to hear if dad can come home you know what I mean? Because he has to, in order for them to release him from the hospital, he had to hit certain milestones in order for them to say he's okay to go home. And I don't know when that milestone is going to get hit. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm like, I want to be home in case he can come home, you know? Right. Right. And so it just stunted me as far as how much I could do as well. Cause I'm like tied to my phone. Like, is somebody going to call me or whatever, you know, or right. if something goes wrong, you know what I mean? Like sure. I, that kind of thing too. So funny part is, is I finally, I was like, okay, I think it was, it was Saturday or whatever it was. I, was. I can't remember what day it was. He came home. But anyway, I was Saturday. I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the gym. And while I'm in the gym, I get a text. I can go home now. <laughs> of course. Of course, of course you right? can. Now that I finally go back to the gym, you can come home. Of course. Right. Right. You're 15 minutes in your workout and they call yeah. you. Yeah. 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 That's, what, and that's then, the way it happens. It's exactly what happened. And I was like, I was like, so when you, he's, he's like, I can come. And I was like, when you can, can you come home? He's like, anytime. He's like, I'll wait though. I was like, all right. <laughs> I'm like, You're like, it's going to be a little bit. I just got here. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, yeah. Anyway. So Jesus Christ. So, so what are some things that you do in order to stay on track when, when life goes crazy like this? <clears throat> so it's really important to me that I like look at my schedule when yeah. it's so chaotic and I literally will schedule to the T like my cardio, then my client check-ins, then my workout, then, you know, my mm -hmm. um, errands. Like I just try to 
put, I call it brain dumping when there's so much chaos going around you, just putting everything out in front of you and sticking to it and following it to a T helps me because then I feel like I'm not just trying to like throw things up in the air and be like, okay, let me try to do this for a couple hours. And then, oh, that actually took four hours. And now, you know, just kind of stick to that schedule. Um, Other thing that I try to do is just be flexible. Like Mm -hmm. in this, in this sport, we are all so rigid with our schedules and our timing and things like that. Sometimes you just have to give yourself some grace, you know, like if I'm supposed to do 30 minutes of cardio that day and it doesn't happen a lot, but for whatever reason, there's a lot going on and I miss it. Maybe I do an hour the next day instead and just try to be flexible that way. Um, You know, I just had a girl check in with me this past week, everybody's got the flu right now. Um, and she didn't go train. And one of the things that she was saying is that she felt so guilty for not training when she was sick. And I was like, you have to be able to know when to step back and when to push, like, when are you making excuses or when do you actually need to just pull back and rest? And sometimes it's okay too, when you're in a really stressful situation like that, sometimes it's okay just to do less. Like that's what your body needs when you have the mental stress and you're trying to go push in the gym. Like that could maybe sometimes be not what you need at that time. However, like I find like this week, I've had a really stressful period, but like I'm actually utilizing my workouts as my stress relief right now. Like that's what I'm looking forward to. And like putting that into the gym. So just kind of evaluating where you're at that way. If you're dreading the gym or it doesn't feel good during that session or something, maybe you just need to pull back and that's okay. And allowing yourself some grace. Um, and then maybe just check in with your coach early. You know, like if I'm having a really tough week, like you did with Jamie, I'm going to shoot her a text and say, Hey, can I check in a day early? Or, Hey, I am supposed to check in on Friday. May I check? do a Saturday because I just can't on Friday. I'm really big on never skipping a check-in, even if it's short and sweet, Same. just to make sure that she knows where I'm at. And I don't believe in just like skipping weeks. I feel like even if like the worst the check-in is that you think, I feel like that's even more of a reason when you need to check in yeah. with your coach, like just to get that feedback and communicate. So, you know, we talked about that at CCTS and I love what Hannah said, like a check-in is not a performance. Yeah. We're not expecting something each week. We're expecting honesty and communication. And that's the only way I'm going to help you. You know, if you're having a tough week and you can't load your photos in, but you want to tell me like how you're feeling and where you're at and what you missed that week, I respect the hell out of that. And that allows me then to know next week when you do that full check-in, what happened last week, what happened this week, and then how I can help you moving forward. Um, So that's, that's kind of the way that I approach it. And it's just about really having those honest conversations with yourself and keep checking in with yourself and it's going to change daily. Yeah. Well, and to, to kind of go off of what you just said with the check-ins too, I know for me that helps me later on down the road too. Like when I had COVID last year, I checked in really religiously, right? I I did it anyway, because I knew going back and looking at it later on, I'd be like, okay, so I look so much better now or this, that, blah, 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 blah. I go back and I look at those photos. I was like, damn, I look like shit, but <laughs> like, I look so much better now. You know what I mean? And like, you can see the changes you see. Okay. That was just, that was a blip. That was something that happened and I had to deal with it. You know what I mean? So I would rather have that evidence, you know, that I can go back and be like, okay, I, I got through it versus just saying, okay, I'm just not going to check in at all. Like, you know, I can remember one of those check-ins that I did. I, my head was pounding so hard that it was hard for me to even stand, but I still did my pictures, you know? Yeah. And I look yeah. back at it now and I'm just like, oh man, I'm like, I'm, I'm really glad I, I did that. I'm really went, I'm glad I went through that. I, I experienced that, you know, because then you can, they always say like, you can't appreciate the good times if you don't have the bad times, you know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I think it's important, like you said, to never miss a check-in, whatever that looks like to you, just don't miss it, you know, yeah. make sure that you're staying consistent with it. Um, and that goes back to like what you were saying too, as far as taking the, pulling back the reins or pushing a little harder or whatever it might be. Like this past week, I was like, you know what? My body has been through a lot. My brain has been through a lot. It just is what it is. Um, so I, I didn't feel bad about the fact that I was training in the, in the shed in the back, in the back, you know, it stimulated my body a little bit differently. I used lighter weights. I didn't, you know, push quite as hard as I do in the gym, those kinds of things. But it, it again, it just stimulated me a little different. Um, and I'm just glad that I did it. I wasn't thrilled about it. Didn't want to do it, but I still went down there and did it. Like the last thing I want to do is go into a shed that's not heated and it's freaking freezing. And I got a little space heater and my fingers are frozen and all those kinds of things, but I still did it, you know, and I still got through it. 
yeah. and I still got my steps. And I still got my all the stuff. I did the things that I that I needed to do in order to feel like I accomplished something. Because otherwise, I would have felt like I just completely wasted the week. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I recognized that my body needed needed a little bit of a like take a step back. Rest. You know? It's yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I go back to when, you're, when your life is hectic, you, you want to focus on the things that you need to focus on versus the things that you want to. Um, you know, again, going back to the training, I like to do like my upper body days at Planet Fitness. It's right down the street. I do my upper body days, my cardio there, that kind of thing. And then I like to do my lower body days at the shop gym. Well, the shop is about 20, 30, whatever minutes away from me, depending on traffic. Right. So it's more time investment when I go there. So like, you know, leading into CCTS, I didn't do any, any working out at the shop or anything like that. I did it all at Plant Fitness. Well, the same thing this past week. And like, when I came out of that, when I came out of coming out of the shop or out of the shed, <laughs> I was like, I don't, I just don't have the ability of the time to be able to go out to that gym. So I'm going to do it here. So at least I get it done, you know? Yeah. And being flexible. Correct. Doing being things okay that I that. have to do versus I would like to do my lower bodies at the shop because that's where I get my best workout. You know what I mean? That, but that's a, that's a want. That's not a need. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So focusing on the things that you need versus what you want, you know, and, and having that extra hour that you would have spent driving is maybe what you needed that day to get something done or right. to be able to go put pick Dan up. Like it's just right. Allowing yourself to, to kind of assess your schedule and doing what you need to do for that That's day. Right. That's right. Yeah. And again, going back to the food and stuff, we've talked about this before too. Like we, you know, we laugh about how Dan was going to be, you know, grilling all my food and everything. Well, he's been out of commission for over a week. True. Now. Yeah. So How have you been like eating? Mega fit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, thank God. I'm like, thank God I had that in the freezer. You know what I mean? So, and even yep. with that, like there were several times where I got called and I had to go to the hospital each day, you know, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna throw my chicken into my bag. At least I got, I've got what I got, you know, and I, I've got my food. I never felt like I, I had to be off of my plan. Because I had food sitting there in the freezer, I could pull out, throw it in my bag, and I'm good. Like I could leave in a matter of five minutes, and that's what I did. Like again, when they when they would call me or whatever about what's going on with him, I would just go to the refrigerator, pull that out, pull out, you know, some some. I have my my bagels and stuff, so I throw those in there, throw in a protein bar, and I'm good. I'm 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 set. I got my food, and I don't have to worry about it. And then I don't have to go to the hospital and freaking try to eat out of a vending machine. You know what I mean? No, and that's so, a really great. Point. I think that's where people go wrong too with the food is like when life gets chaotic, they just like throw the food up in the air and yeah. they're like, I deserve, you know, this is the story yes. they tell themselves. I deserve to now go order food or have this comfort meal, which I get that's emotional. That's an emotional response. But I always tell like my people that I feel like when life is so chaotic around you, the one thing you have control over is what you put into your mouth. And there is solace in that. You know, I, yep. again, just had someone check in this week and they were like, you know, life's so crazy right now, but I stuck to my plan and I feel so good about that because yeah. it's the one thing I felt like I had control over this week. And it made me feel good internally, even though I couldn't hit my cardio, hit my steps, things like that. I stuck to my food and her weight was fine. Yeah. So like that is the one thing you can control is what goes into your mouth during those moments. Mm -hmm. And again, emotional responses, comfort food and going to buy things or the vending machine. Yep. No, just take the five minutes, put everything you need into a lunchbox and go. When my dad was sick two years ago, I was in the hospital in and out with him for days and hours on end. And I stuck to my plan 100%. I brought my lunchbox with me. It had a ton of ice packs. I asked them to put stuff in their fridge and they were really open to that. Like that was the one thing I could control during that time. And it made me feel better. So that's yeah. a really great point about the food. And, and to that point too, like Dan keeps wanting me to buy him, you know, comfort food and stuff like that. I'm like, Dan, you do realize that you have to sit on your ass for the next six weeks, right? I'm like, the last thing you want to be doing is filling yourself full of dairy and all this stuff that's going to block you up. Things that are make, going to make you feel like crap, especially we got those painkillers in you and all this kind of stuff too. Like, yeah, I get it. Like you want to, I get that you want to have that comfort food. I understand that. You know what I mean? But let's, let's make some, some good choices when it comes to comfort food, you know? Yeah. So like, like instead of getting ice cream or, or whatever like that, we're getting sherbet, you know, where it doesn't yeah. have dairy. On the lighter side. Yeah. 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 Stuff like that. So again, just making smarter choices in that, that realm, like there's, there's ways to, to do it again. If you want a candy bar, instead of getting, instead of getting a candy bar, get a protein bar, you know, something yeah. like that, something simple like that 
can make a big difference just mentally, but also physically how you feel too, things like that. Like, you know, he, he was in the hospital and he's like, I went to the vending machine, go get a freaking Snickers bar. And they wanted $4 for a Snickers bar. And he's like, I'm not doing that. And he went, so went back to his room. Good thing he's frugal. <laughs> I, know. I was like, I wouldn't either. Screw that. <laughs> I'm like $4 for a chocolate that's bar. No, that's ridiculous. Uh, it's ridiculous. And then if you go buy a salad or something even, you know, healthier, it's $15 oh, yeah. and you're like, oh, this yeah. is what's wrong with America. Yep, exactly. Exactly yeah. what's wrong with it. You know, that's, that's lettuce is $15. Yeah. He's like, I kind of, he's like, I can understand it when you're going to like the movies or something like that. You know, they, they jack up the prices because they want to make money. He's like, but you're in the hospital, man. Like you're in the hospital. That's like, crazy. You got families in there with their loved ones. They got to pay $4 for a candy bar. Like, yeah, on, man. No, that's ridiculous. But okay, I I am not surprised. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, that's a topic for a whole other day. Oh, oh, yeah, <laughs> no, we're gonna need a few hours for that one <laughs> and some really detailed notes. I know, I know, right? <laughs> oh yeah, but um. <sighs> But yeah, so that's, you know, as we always talk about, prevention is the best the best way to, to get around the healthcare system. So this is also ways to keep yourself out of the hospital. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. Keep yourself yeah. healthy. You yeah. know, we talk about that too. It's like the bad, the better you can keep yourself day to day, the, the less you're going to have to deal with things like this, you know? So and listening to your body and knowing when you need to get into the doctor. And, you know, I think sometimes people hold things off because fear of the unknown, like yeah. they don't want to know because then they have to deal with it. But yep. that's, you know, kind of where things get worse obviously that, or not wanting to take time off you know that's that's why Danzel's situation got to the where to the way it was you just didn't want to take right. time off in order to get it taken care of and it got 10 times worse because you didn't want to take time off and i'm like that you know i had this yeah. discussion with you <laughs> I had this yeah. discussion with you this week yeah <laughs> you know like sometimes you just got to bite the bullet and you got to do it because it's going to be it's it's going to be worse if you don't it's going to be Absolutely. worse if you don't take care of it now so yeah. you know. learn from Dan <laughs> right, I know. He's he's yeah. he's a lesson for all of you. I've got a freaking hair on my. It's like attached. Like it's like one of those little fuzzies. It's like attached to my eyelash somewhere, and it keeps going in my eyelash on my nose. It's and like poking. crazy. Well, it's like a little fuzzy. I can feel it. Like I can feel it. Like it, I don't know where it is. It's probably like an Elvis hair or something like that. I can feel it an tickling. Elvis hair. It's like, it's tickling me. <laughs> Drive me nuts. <laughs> That's what I don't miss about eyelash extensions is shit gets caught in there all the time. Yeah. I'm like going all natural now. I got my extensions out. I like it. I like it. Yep. Just given everything. I, well, these these are the, the Lashify ones. So these ones I can take off. I try to do that. I am just so not a girl. Like I try to do that and I'm like poking myself in the eye and then it ends up up here. Yeah. Like, it whatever. takes it takes some practice. So yeah. But Yours I stopped doing good. Thank you. I stopped doing the, la the lash extensions because you have to go in every two weeks and get them filled and all of that. And then they Isn't that the worst lashes. appointment? That is the worst kind of appointment. Yes. You are caffeinated if you go in the morning and you're like, yes. And yeah. then you can't be on your phone and it's, it's the worst. And it's like two hours. Like you're sitting there yes. just with your eyes closed for two hours. It's like, how do you do that? I can't do that. I can't <laughs> nap. Everyone's like, take a lash nap. I'm like, I don't well, I've nap. done that. I've done that, but then I wake myself up snoring and I'm like, well, that was a, that was, that was embarrassing. I you know what I mean? And I was, I was like, like, okay, I'll never do that again. That's embarrassing. Yeah. It is embarrassing. I was like, I'm like, I'm, like how long was I snoring for? You know what yes. I mean? Like, because when you're on your yourself. back, you're, you snore. Yeah, I exactly. Know. I know. So, I know. Anyway. That's why I, 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 that's why I got rid of them. I can't lay there for two hours. Like, yeah. I'm just yeah, I'm yeah, done. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and that was the whole thing for me. It was just the time commitment more than anything else. Because then, you know, the place that I went to was like an hour drive. So you put that on top of the how long you're sitting in the chair. It's a whole day. That you're it is. Eating. It's a yeah. whole day. I can't do that yeah. every two weeks. No. No. Can't do that. No. So, and every time that I would go get my competition makeup, Amber LeBeau, she was like, can you please get these off? She's like, I just want to be able to like do what I want to do with your face. I'm like, okay, fair. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because so, you slay my face, fair. <laughs> yeah, the, the Lashify ones do take time to get used to putting them on and how to do them. But once you do, they, they, they're, they're good. Like I'll, I can keep the, when you have the, it's the whisper light, or no, I'm sorry, not the whisper light, it's the charcoal um, adhesive one that's really good. So that one, I can get these to stay on for about five days without... Well, anything the moving or anything like that yeah so they stay pretty good there's a there's a whisper light one that that'll last about a day or two so if you okay. want to, if you want to just do it real quick but i usually use the the charcoal one and then um and they say you can take the lashes off and wash them and reuse them but i don't ever do that i just buy new ones <laughs> so. they're, they're on the cheaper side i think that they're yeah. really cost effective for the people that do it all the time i had a friend that introduced me to them and she put them on all the time and they're beautiful and they're yeah. really cost effective and they're really yep. like better for the lash because you could take them off put them on whatever so yep. they're, yep. they're, 
if you have the patience for them, which I don't, <laughs> they're good. Well, and again, it's one of those things, like if you're not good at the makeup stuff and things like that, you're not going to be good at these. It's just, it just is what it is. It's, it's a skill. It's a skill. <laughs> and, yeah. um, but it gets better. Like I said, it gets better as the more that you do it. Um, it gets easier to fix them if they get screwed up or whatever, that kind of thing too. So, you know, I sleep in them. I'll, I'll keep them on for five days and take them off, put a new set on, or I'll keep them off for a few days. Like that's what I did this last time. I had them off for like four days this last time because I wasn't doing any filming or anything like that. So I just didn't put them back on, you know? Yeah. Um, and then it doesn't bare ruin face. Your, yes. <laughs> <laughs> then it doesn't ruin your, doesn't ruin your actual lashes, things like that. Um, I put up a video in my Insta stories uh, a couple days ago where I had no makeup on and no lashes or anything like that. One of the girls responded. She's like, you look like you're 15 years younger when you got no makeup on. I go, yeah, my husband always tells me I look like I'm 18 when I have no makeup on and it makes him feel like a pervert. <laughs> it's not cute for him. <laughs> you're like, Ew, I know. He's, like I know. he's like, no, he's like, you look way too young. <laughs> It was actually that that's really funny that you said that at the Ritz, uh, we went somewhere and somebody that was helping us, um, we were ordering alcohol and it, I had Hannah and Jeannie next to me and then she looks at me and she's like, how old are you? I'm going to give it to you, but how old are you? And I'm like, I'm 32. And that's she was awesome. like, no, you're not. You're 16. And I'm like, do you want my ID? <laughs> like, so I handed to her. She was blown away, but yeah. you look so youthful when you like don't have makeup on. And, and part of it too is that younger girls now look so much older. Like, have you no. noticed that? It's really scary. I know. It really is. I'm like, you, I'm, I don't, it's They're it's aging crazy. themselves, like, yes. with, with makeup and the hairstyle. I know. It's crazy. I'm like, I look back at what I looked like when I was 16. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, not even close. Yes. <laughs> I was like, Literally, man. I was like, yeah. Like, I don't know. I, I would rather look 16 when I'm 30. I'm good with that. I'm good. I know. For when real. You when I get older. <laughs> yeah. Like, so, because Dan is, is about to turn 59. So he's getting close to 60. And when he was in the hospital, they were asking it like the, the, the doctor, she was like, I still can't believe that you're 58. She's like, you just don't, she's like, you just don't look. She's like, I would have guessed 42, maybe, you know, that kind of thing. He's like, that's what he's, she's like, that's why you have such a young wife because you look so young. And she goes, she goes, how old is your wife? And he goes, well, she's 42. She goes, no, she's not. I thought she was like 28. <laughs> I was like, but I don't make a fun. <laughs> you're right. And you're like, and thank you. And I know. Thank I was you. like. I am. Thank you. I'm 28. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I am 28. <laughs> yes. I mean, saying it, you'll believe it. That's right. Hey, I, and I saw that, you know, I really believe the age is, is an attitude more than anything else. I don't think it's a, it's a number. I mean, I, you know, and oh, this is, this is the funny part too. So she goes, what's your secret? She goes to Dan, what's your secret? Why do you guys look so young? He goes, we don't have kids. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, I love that answer. Hopefully that's it's no true. Kids club. No, no kids club. I love no that. That's that's got a great ring to it. No kids club. Sorry. <laughs> no kids allowed. It's um, so funny. Like in this building that we live in, um, like there we live on the third floor and like everybody's friends. We actually they do like a party all together once a month and we oh, work nice. out the party. But everybody here is single with no kids. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That, Single no like, kids. That's like that episode of Friends where um, Ross moves into the new building and they have a they have a, a party for the, the janitor that's leaving or whatever, so he doesn't show up. So Phoebe goes and she becomes friends with everybody and they everybody, all hate Ross. She, yes, <laughs> exactly. I love that's the Friends great. reference, by the way. Uh, I'm just aging myself right there. You know, no big deal. <laughs> hey, it's okay. We'll we'll rewind that. We'll take that out. I saw something, I saw a meme where they were talking about how um, the cast of Friends, their age right now, they are the same age as the Golden Girls when they were filming the Golden Girls. <laughs> like, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the Golden oh, Girls were like wow. in their, like their 50s, like early 50s. Damn. Yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. And so that's the Friends, the Friends uh, cast right now are all their age when they were filming Golden Girls. And half of that cast looks like exactly the same. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. they're, they're aging very, yeah. very well. I need their secrets. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just saw something too about, cause Brad Pitt's about to turn 60. Um, God, wow. I know. And how, and how good he looks and everything like that too. And they were talking about how he's, he's had like a, some sort of a facelift or whatever, but whatever he did may, didn't, doesn't look like he did work. You know what I mean? I think wow. there's a difference, you know, there's a difference between making yourself look like somebody else versus making yourself look like you just you more person. useful. Yes, correct. Just the better version of you kind of thing, yeah. you know, yeah. complete side tangent, but that's what I do. I mean, I do fillers, I do Botox, I do all that stuff, but I don't do it to change what I look like. I do it to keep 
my youth, <laughs> if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think going back to why a lot of these 16 year old girls look like they're 26 is because they're trying to make themselves look like the Kardashians or whatever it might be versus just trying to be themselves kind of thing. Yeah. You know? More of that mature look, but if they just give themselves some more time and hang yeah. on to their youthfulness, it's going to help them later on. Right. I'm like, I always had, and I still, and I got them now. I'm like, I've always had these chipmunk cheeks and I hated them because my face was always so round. But now that I'm older, like I'm still getting angular because I'm older, but I'm a lot rounder than I would have been. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> aging. I look, yeah, aging. I look I look back at photos from when I was you know lean, like contest prep lean, and I'm like, holy jeez, I didn't realize how freaking angular I was. Like, yeah, sunk in it. And I remember like, oh, when my God. like my first prep, one of my really good friends came up to me. She's like, "You look like a skeleton," and I was like. I don't like that. Like I yeah. was like a little offended, but I can see it now. Like, especially the first time you diet down and people aren't used to that that way. And you just have like straight up bones in your face. Like, I look back at just, just November and I like, you know, I'm like, man, I was like, it's a big difference, you know, yeah. I'm up, you know, what, 10, 12 pounds, whatever, since for, for stage rape, it's two months post show. It's about right. And you um, look really good though. I mean, you. you, you're, I mean, the shape that you're like creating fullness. still and the fullness, like unreal. Yeah. I'm very, I'm very, very happy. Like I've talked about before, like my ver reverse is going really, it's just to touch on that too. Like, um, the last two weeks, Jamie has not changed my macros, but she has brought my cardio down. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'm only doing 15 minutes, four times a week right now for cardio. Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah. That's easy. Yeah. And, and I think that's a warm up. <laughs> yeah. My calories are like 2,400 or something like that. Plus a cheap, Hell yeah. but, you know, on track, on track meal every week. That's awesome. Um, and I was looking back and it's just crazy. Like I posted this on my, on my Instagram the other day. I was looking back at before I started working with Jamie, the last show that I did was 2018. And I can remember that whole situation where the coach that I had at the time was like, we just need to get you a little bit leaner, a little bit leaner, a little bit leaner. So I just kept dropping weight, dropping weight, dropping weight. I wasn't getting leaner. I was just dropping weight. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm looking at these photos and like, you don't see it until you go and you look back at it. And I'm just like, man, I was so skinny. I had nothing. I had nothing, yeah. no shape, no nothing, no muscle. I'm like, yeah. no friggin' wonder why I, I did shitty. Yeah. Like, yeah, just, I you, know you lost, nothing. you lost the bodybuilding part and just went yeah. to the best. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, you know, those pictures, the difference between the two stage weights was 10 pounds because I was under 130 at that, at that show. I was under 130 for two shows my whole career, that one. And then one that was 2016, 2017. Yeah. The year before, I think. Wow two years, a year or two years ago, whatever, different coach, two different coaches, but they both wheeled me away so much that I was under 130 pounds. And, um, Japan, I was 139. So wow. <laughs> yeah. It yeah, goes to show you 10 pounds of size. Yeah. yeah and I still also had a ton of muscle though. You have, yeah, you've got a ton of muscle since working with Jamie. Oh yeah. hundred percent. And that's why yeah. I go back to like, you know, some, some people are like, well, why am I not progressing faster? A lot of times it's because you're getting on stage too much, you know, with Jamie, I've been working with her since 2020. So it's been three, almost three and a half years. And I've gotten on stage a total of four times, four total. Yep. Building yeah. long building seasons in between. Yeah. Yeah. I've had two shows, two years. I've been with her for three and a half. So that tells you the majority of the time that I've been with her, I've been building. That's so funny, like with like the Reddit posts and stuff when they start like old, old Reddit posts and they start talking about Jamie and they're like, yeah, she doesn't feed her girl. Like Jamie feeds us, like feeds us the day of the show. Like that's why she wants us ready two weeks early because she wants to feed us into the show. There's some girls that like, we're all checking into the room before a show and they're like, oh my God, I ate so much food this morning and I'm feeling yep. full. And did, like she feeds us and she yeah. wants us to stay healthy. Like we're, you know, kind of talking about plans right now and things like that. And I'm growing like a weed right now. And she's like, no, we need to keep feeding. We need to keep right. growing. Like your body wants to grow right now. We are continuing this. Like she wants health phases and long-term off seasons. So absolutely. And that's the only way to continue changing. And then there's some athletes, Julia, like yeah. she, she's for her stature and frame, but she can't really put on that much more muscle. She just needs a little here, a little there, a little later. So she can be on stage a lot, like more frequent and a lot longer. Mm -hmm. because she can stay so lean in her off season and you know things like that so it's just really about the person That's and right. what they need and if you need more muscle you're going to need more long long-term off season you're just going to yeah. have to get used to that or just well, keep showing up and not changing 
Right. And it's, it's about a coach paying attention to you too, because like going back to the 2018, I was looking back and I looked at my off season program and I was on 1600 calories in my off season. That's yeah. That's mm-hmm. how much I was on when I was in Japan. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like that was your peak. That was week my peak week. Yeah. That was my peak week. Yep. That's not enough for your stature. <laughs> no. I'm yeah. like, man, if I, maybe if I was five, two, but I'm not I'm five, nine. No. <laughs> Yeah, a, like, a lot, a lot more. Oh wow. my god, and it's that's those, wild. It's one of those things too. Like I, I look back at it now, and I'm like, why? Uh, you can't. I can't see myself clearly. I, I can't. I cannot. Can't do it. So that's why I have to have a coach. I can't. I cannot see myself clearly Me at all. I can see myself once I get out of the situation. Yeah, you know, once I'm out yeah. of the situation, looking back, like I was just looking at photos yesterday from two weeks post show, the last the photo shoot that he did, I was like, damn, I was so lean. Like I had even put on weight since the show, and I was like, man, I was lean. No wonder why Brian, my photographer, I was like, no wonder why he was, he was saying I could get on stage that day because I looked like I could get on stage that day. But yeah, I didn't see, I didn't see it when I was there. You know what I mean? And I love looking back on those check ins where I looked at the check in at the time and I was like, oh, I'm not lean enough. I know. Right? Da, 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 da. And then I'm like, dude, what were you? You have what a were you thinking? stomach. Yeah. Like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Yes. This is oh, why yeah, yeah, yeah. coaches need coaches too. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. And I'm just like, I mean, I, don't, I, I, I couldn't see myself, but why didn't they see it? Why didn't they say something to me like at the time? <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing I can say about, about Jamie from the get go. Like even last year, like as, as I was prepping for these shows, she's like, I think we need more muscle. Like the whole time I was like, no, but I want to get on stage. She's like, but we need more glutes. We need more size. She kept, she, she told me like, she saw that I needed more size, you know? And even like when we did, like we talked about this with Hawaii and Japan, I mean, because I was, you know, six, seven pounds heavier in Hawaii, I actually looked like I had more muscle in Hawaii. And then when I went to got, got to Japan, because once I pulled that extra inflammation off, all of a sudden you realize, Oh, she actually doesn't have as much size on her as we thought she did. Right. You know, yeah. you don't know that until you get on stage. And even, even Jamie said that I was like, when I looked at my photos, I was like, I actually liked my shape better in, in Hawaii because I was fuller and I was rounder. Fuller. Right. You know, I was like, you know, I look like I have more size. I was like, I more healthy. Inf- yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I know yeah. it's inflammation. I get that. I was like, but I look thicker, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's what I'm like, the next time I get on stage, I want to look like the mix between those two, right. <laughs> you know, I want to look that full and round, but I want to be lean enough too. ultimate so, goal, ultimate yeah. goal. That's, that's what we're shooting for, you know? So I do think it's interesting. I've been doing a lot of consult calls lately and the thing, the feedback I keep hearing from people, because when I do a consult call, I ask them if they're comfortable for their last check-in photos, or I teach them how to do a check-in photo if they're like a new competitor and whatnot. And you know, I get off the call with them and they'll be like, thank you so much for being honest with me. And they're either working with a coach right now and they don't feel like that coach gives them feedback. Like, you know, the coach is just like, yeah, things look great. Keep going. Or, you know, just not telling them what they see. Um, Or they're like a brand new competitor and they've been doing their research and they've been, you know, interviewing coaches and the coach is like, yeah, let's just get on stage. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, you can definitely Mm -hmm. do that. And there will definitely be a coach that does that for you. But remember, we're in a bodybuilding show and you just started bodybuilding. Like, so um, they're like, oh, well, I don't want to step on stage unless I'm going to get in that top spot. That's also something I ask on the console calls. It's like, what's your expectation when you step on stage? Are you wanting to get in that top spot? Are you just like cool with the experience? Like blah, blah, blah. And if they're competitive and they don't have a lot of muscle, you know, it's, it's, it's a really hard conversation, but I just try to be honest because their expectation at the end of the day falls back on me. That's you right. know, like That's I don't right. want them stepping off stage and think they were thinking they were going to get first or second. They have zero muscle and they're coming out on the last call out and they're coming off stage mad at me. If I give yep. them that expectation ahead of time, you know, and that's what they choose. That's the, their own choice. They have that's to right. learn that. You know, so. this, this, this is a good little segue. Cause one of the questions I put up a question box, one of the questions that somebody asked was, um, some recommendations on like suit colors and, and connectors, things like that. Right. So yesterday I was, I, I'm in a bunch of these Facebook groups with newbie competitors and stuff like that. And yesterday I was going back and forth. And first of all, guys, if I get into a discussion with you in a Facebook group, I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just discussing things. If you have a question or if you put out information, I'm going to come back and I'm going to tell you the truth and tell you what's right, what's wrong. So going back to, I'm going to tell you the truth. So I got into a discussion with one of the girls um, in, in here. She thought that I was arguing. I was like, listen, I'm not arguing with you. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you because I've been in this industry for 15 years that this is the scenario. So um, there was a there was a newbie girl that came in and asked questions about um, suit cut, things like that. And this girl came in and said, but you need to have, you need to have multiple suits because you want to pick a suit that's not going to um, 
make you blend in with the background. Okay. You heard this before where, I mean, I, yeah, I've heard it, but <laughs> yeah, 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 ahead. yeah, yeah. Where, where girls think they have to have a suit that's not the same color as the backdrop. Okay. Yes. That is not a thing. No. It is not a thing. It is not a thing. Okay. It's not a thing. No. <laughs> so can I say that again? It's not a thing. Um, right. Where that began, where that started was a particular suit company put it out in their marketing. Okay. So then it just kind of picked up like wildfire and they're saying you need to not wear a suit that matches the backdrop because you're going to blend in with the background. If you're blending in with the background, I would argue that you're not doing what you need to be doing on Correct. stage to capture some attention. Like the only way you're going to blend in with the background is if you take the backdrop and like put it around you. That's the only right. way you're going to you blend in with the background. Like... So, and I know why they, they said this, you know, they said this because they want you buying multiple suits. They want you right. buying multiple suits so that, you know, if you've got a black background, you got a black suit. Okay. I got, I'm going to wear a blue suit now, you know, I think that's but, disgusting. Sorry. I know. Uh, agree. But like I brought up the, 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 the um, example of Jennifer Dory when she won her first pro show, it was in purple at the Nashville fit show. The background is purple. Wow. She won, she won the show. She won the show. You know, yeah. you look at Jennifer Dory, she wears purple or she wears green. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It's purple or green, always purple or green. You look at Ashley Kaltwasser, it's green or red, always green or red. Doesn't matter what's behind her, green or red, always. Laura Lee, she's only ever worn blue. Blue. Versions of blue. Yep. You, you wear the same color all blue. the time. Yep. Teal. Doesn't matter, right? Nope. Nope. Doesn't matter. So anyway, so <laughs> so I, I these are the these are the things I'm putting in the comments, right? Um, you as a competitor, as a new competitor coming in and going into these groups or going to wherever, you need to know who to listen to and who not to. Right? I think yeah. a lot of times, like we talked about before, there's a lot of information on the internet and a lot of it's wrong. Now, I'm not saying that your experience is wrong, that you, like, because a particular girl, you know, she was saying, this is, this is what a judge told me. I said, okay, who told you? What judge told you you needed to have a different suit? She couldn't tell me, of course. I don't think that that's what the judge actually said. Right? right. That was her interpretation. Correct. Right. I believe it was how she interpreted it. Cause then she said something about her skin tone or whatever. I said, yes, your suit color absolutely is dependent upon your skin tone. 100%. 100%. Yep. But not, not the backdrop. She also mentioned the lighting, not the lighting either, because guess what? Everybody's in the same lighting. That's the first thing. So that doesn't matter if it's going to affect you, it's going to affect everybody else. Second thing is you don't know what the lighting's going to be until you step on stage. <laughs> right. I think you're right. It sounded like there was like a bunch of different things that were talked about. Like maybe it was poor lighting and a poor Correct. backdrop. It had nothing to do with the suit she was wearing right. against the backdrop. It was just right. lots of things that were talked about in her interpretation of it. Exactly. So it goes back to as a newbie competitor, you got to know who to listen to and who not to. Right. Yeah. And I would even say, I would take it one step further that I wouldn't even listen to a lot of athletes, a lot of the, the top Olympians, I wouldn't listen to them because they don't coach athletes, right? Yeah. If yeah. they're not successful as a coach, then don't listen to what they have to say as far as advice because they're only going on their own personal experience. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate to you. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. If they coach other people, sure. If they coach other people, then they probably have a good idea of what yeah. they're talking about. Good eye. Mm -hmm. Yep. But if they're, if they're not, they're just going based on what they know works for them. Yeah. And, and so go, what resources would you say are best for newbie competitors when they're looking at things like that? For me, the first one that pops in my head is obviously you, but also Becky Clausen. She puts out yeah. a lot of information. That's a very well-known judge. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So like, what, what would you say someone who can't necessarily afford a coach right now, or, you know, they're kind of doing their own research on, research on suits and stuff. Like what would you say is a good resource for them? So, yeah, I would say judges, um, but Becky Clausen is a great one because she puts out a lot of information on online. So it's easily accessible. Um, she's one of our top IFBB NPC judges, a female, all that stuff. Great. Um, Sandy's a great resource too, but she doesn't put a lot of information out on the internet. So she doesn't have Instagram or anything like that. So it's kind of right. hard to do that. Um, <clears throat> Tyler's another one. Uh, I mentioned this at, at CCTS, right? If you're listening to somebody, a coach or something like that, you want to make sure that what they're saying is in line with what the judges are saying, right? So uh, Tyler has started putting out videos to recap some of these, some of these shows, things like that. If what he's saying is way off from what whoever it is you're listening to is saying, don't listen to that person anymore. Yeah. You know? Red flag. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to look at, at people that are, that are parroting what the judges are saying as well. Um, 
and people that have the experience that have that put people on stages that do well that 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 ascend in the sport you know things like that and also you just went to the npc uh women's workshop almost every state now has something like that you know we have one here in virginia coming up in february and they bring in expert coaches they bring in you know people they bring in the judges gary Udits here you know they bring those people in to speak and to talk and to, to teach all this stuff those are the places and it's free the one here is free so right you can go there. Now, I'm not saying you're going to get individual attention and, and specific information for you. You might get little tidbits here and there, but you're going to get a general overview, right? right. You're going right. to get the basics covered. Yep. And then you go from there and then you can kind of pick and choose, say, okay, well, this lines up with that. This doesn't line up with that. You know what I mean? Yep. And um, you have to think too, where this all started was a business right. is the one that said this in Correct. your question, what the motive the was motive. behind Thing, exactly. That, right? And then if you're showing up to a free seminar with, you know, head promoters and head judges, they have no gain. That's they right. Have zero gain in the information they're giving you other than the factual truth of what's going on in yep. the division today. And I think yep. to a lot of newbie competitors due to finances, they will hire a coach that's local to their area mm -hmm. and gym. And while that person will probably do a really good job for their, you know, first prep, and that's kind of what they need a little bit of a, a lighter financial commitment and, mm -hmm. you know, just seeing yeah. if they yeah. like yeah. them or whatever. But that coach probably doesn't know a lot about the NPC, the IFBB, what's mm -hmm. being picked on stage. They know how to train you and they may know how to diet you, but they don't really have the eye for the division. Correct. And that's the hard part. So yeah. when you get through that first show, there's a lot of girls that I get on a consult with and they're like, I had this first coach. He was great. But then I showed up and I wasn't conditioned enough or I didn't have yeah. enough muscle or I didn't look like the other girls in the class. And I was like, well, he probably just didn't know. And that's, that's right. fair. Now you know you love the sport. Now you're willing to pay more for a coach and now you can invest in it. That's so right. just keep that in mind as well of who you're who you're hiring to give you that advice and what their experience is within the sport. Well, that's what I said to this girl yesterday too. I was like, for me, I'm like, I design suits. That's what I do. I said, you know, right. it, would be, it would be more advantageous of me to tell you to buy every color suit under the sun because you don't know what kind of lighting and backdrop you're going to be in, in front of and, and around. But I don't do that because that's not the truth, right? Right. So that like, I don't, I don't want you buying 15 suits from me because you don't need that, <laughs> right. you know, like you don't need yeah. to, you don't need to have a new suit for every stage. You don't No. Nope. you know, no. so no, I've never had feedback of like, Hey, you didn't pop because you were into right. the background. I've never right. had that feedback. I do have two suit colors just because. I loved this red suit. We keep talking about this, yep. you know, ambiguous red suit, but I still haven't worn it yet. Yep. Why? Because I found my look and the judges right. love my look and they're like, don't change a thing. So right. I'm going to keep showing up and not changing a thing. Right. Um, so, and I also think too, that once, once you find that look, the judges look for you that way, like on that lineup. So, you know, when you're changing suit colors all the time, like it, you know, it's, it's not like an outfit, like, going on stage is not like an outfit or you're changing your accessories every time it's that I think can almost hurt you because yes. the judges, if they like a look and they're telling you keep showing up and just change, you know, this with your physique, they're looking for that look mm -hmm. with slight improvements. So now if you're making the slight improvements, but also changing the suit color or your jewelry and blah, 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 it kind of throws them off a little bit. Yep. We talked so, about this with Shelby because last year she would switch to that pink suit and the curls in her hair. And yeah. I thought it was a beautiful look. I actually Me really too. loved it. I Me actually too. really loved it. But the judges were like, no, I like you with your straight hair and your red suit. <laughs> yep. literally, like literally the judges were like, no, yeah. like that yeah. was her feedback. And yeah. I love that look too. I, did too. Pro I was like, wow, she looks really pretty. And I liked the pink suit on her with her skin tone and stuff, but I'm not judging. So it doesn't matter what my opinion yes. is. It like, could have been a situation of like, which came first, the chicken or the egg. Like if she'd come out initially with the pink and the curls, maybe that would have been her look. That's a but really they, great point. That's you know, really they just got so used to seeing her in the red that they like her in the red, you know, yeah. with straight hair. There's very few people, too, that on stage can get away with that middle part. She gets mm -hmm. with the middle, part, the middle part, you know. She's so, so yeah. yeah, like, it's like, that's just her thing. That's her look. That's her vibe. That's her style. And that's what the judges like seeing her in, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. You know, those are the things. Like, and again, so going back to the question that was actually asked of me in the, in the question box, when it comes to... Um, colors and connectors and things like that. Uh, the basics are, it's going to be different for every person. And again, going back to once you find your look, you find your look. Um, but the basics are jewel tones are always going to be a winner. Um, 
you know, like a sapphire blue, an emerald green, a ruby red, you know, the really deep colors that have a lot of pigment to them are always going to be safe. Um, and then connectors that are more simple versus ornate. You don't want somebody looking at your suit and saying, oh my God, it's a gorgeous con connector, right? <laughs> like they you want them looking at you and not the suit. They want, you want the suit to compliment you and not the other way around, right? Yeah. Um, so whenever I, I, I get with a, a client, as far as consults are concerned, things like that, I always take into account what they want. Um, but I also take into account what the judges want to see too. And what's going to flatter them, um, depending on, you know, their hip height and how much they, and how much glute they have, you know, sometimes, and this is the other thing too, I get girls that want these little teeny tiny micro cuts on the back of their glutes and that does not work for everybody. No, it doesn't. I'm like, nope. just because, just because, you know, you see it on Laura Lee because she's got these big, huge round bubbly glutes, looks great on her. You don't have those glutes. Doesn't mean... Right. Doesn't mean it's going to look good on you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's yeah. where I rely on suit makers that I send to my, I'm like, you guys look at their check-in photos and you tell us what the, what the cut yeah. needs to be. Cause you yeah. guys have that eye. You know, I could tell you what I want to see in the suit, but I don't know if it needs to be a T or if it needs to have a little yes. bit more fabric or what, what curvature, like there's so much that goes into making these suits these days. There is. And you know, we, whenever I do my show reviews and stuff, I say this a lot. I'm like, you can see her tailbone, the, the suit, two cuts too small. I'm like, it's yeah. actually making her glutes look like they're shallow. Yeah. You know, adding just another quarter of an inch of fabric on there would make her round out, make her look fuller and rounder or bubblier. You know what I mean? Like smaller yep. is not better. You know, smaller no. is not better than the front low, 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 low is not better. Like automatically no. you start getting, you start worrying like things are going to slip out. You know what I yeah. mean? And it's happened. So I've seen it. <laughs> The infamous uh, Tampa Pro from the back, too. Yeah. The one girl, like, I don't know how somebody didn't tell her before she got on stage. That, yep. That, that suit that... was way too small. Mm. Yep. Mm. Yeah. And this is why you need to be doing check-ins all the time, too, because who knows? Maybe when she wasn't that lean, the suit might have been okay. But, right. you know, a couple of pounds down, and all of a sudden, you're seeing booty hole. Like, you didn't want to see that. Right. We're seeing well, that a that's lot. Good too. Like in um, check-ins closer to stage, I tell my girls to check in in their suit because yeah. as they're getting leaner, especially those last yes. three or four weeks when things are changing daily, we need to make sure the suit actually fits. There's been some times where I'm like, hey, you're getting leaner. That doesn't work anymore. Let's get on the phone mm -hmm. with the girls and let's try to get this, you know, resized, blah, blah, blah. Let's get whatever. Like yep. we got to get an eye on the look going yep. into peak week. <laughs> Which by the way, every suit that I do has adjustable hooks in the back so you can tighten your, your suit. One of my Sorry. biggest, one of my biggest pet peeves with my own suits on girls is when they don't wear them tight enough because they start to sag. I'm like, listen, there's a reason why there's there's adjusters in the back. Tighten it, tighten, tighten, it, tighten it, it, tighten it. Um, it'll sag in the front. Pull it up from the front. You know, pull yes. it up from the back. Tighten it in the back. Or pull it up from the front. Tighten it in the back. And it'll sound perfect. I promise you. Just, just, just. And even send me photos on show day. I don't care because I want you to look right. <laughs> right. Like, I don't want you yeah. going on stage looking like it's bagging on you. You know what I mean? Like that's that's yeah. that's why we put the hooks in the back so you can pull it tighter. Yeah. Um, you know, you can I've been. It. I've had to like literally take a clothespin and like yeah, like for the back if it's too wide, like make it scrunchier or or, or let yep. out scrunch like. Yeah. The suit is really important and it's not something, you know, I, when I was in the beginning of my coaching career, I would say to the girls like, yeah, if you need to like go rent a suit, and obviously if they have to go rent a suit, that's yeah. fine. But just know it's not going to fit you right. That's it's right. not going to fit you. Like these suits are expensive because they are custom to you and your body. Um, yep. It's not just like a, like they have all this fabric hanging on the wall and you order your suit and they pull it off the wall and they put it in a bag and they ship it. Like they yes. ask you for very specific measurements and photos that they can design it to yep. your frame and it's yep. it's important it's a bad suit can can really mm -hmm. throw off the look or yep. yeah make you very memorable for years to come mm -hmm. well, <laughs> in a think, bad way yeah and the thing the thing that that I think a lot of people get um I guess can get conflicted about more than anything is the names of the suits like people want want a pro cut you know well it's just yeah. a, it's just it's just the name it's, it's just a yeah. name. It doesn't, like, it doesn't mean, mean that that's anything. what you need on the pro level. <laughs> no, or pro. It's just the name of yeah. Exactly. No, it's just it's just the name. It's just and it doesn't it doesn't matter if it doesn't look good on you. It doesn't look good on you. Yeah, that's the bottom line. You know, yep. and and I think we're seeing this a lot more with girls that are moving up in the ranks that are going to like national level shows, things like that. It's like okay, but you still don't have quite as much development as what you're going to need when you get onto the pro stage. So what you're showing 
is shallow, shallow glutes in the back when you're, when you've got that tiny of a fabric, you know, like it's just, you, you got, you've got to be aware of your own look. And again, going back to sometimes we can't see ourselves. I can't see myself. You know, nope. that's why, that's why I have a coach to tell me, okay, what do I got to do to adjust this? Do I got to fix this? Do I got whatever? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. How many times you've changed your posing routine with JB's yeah. back and what's to show and what to hide. And yep. like, we, we think that something looks really cool or like a certain spin or something. And Jamie's like, no, less yeah. is more. Like mm -hmm. you, you're not showing your best side. I'm like, oh, yep. okay. No, a good example is I, I put on one of my own cuts as a micro cut and I put it on. Jamie's like, no, it's too small. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm I like, will make a bigger one. Yeah. Got it. I'm like, but my glutes look so juicy. <laughs> we got to tone that down now. Well, you know, it's too small. Yeah. I was like, okay, got it. Yeah. <laughs> got to trust the eyes, especially when you're in peak, when you're, yeah. when you're so dieted down. Like, you, you just, you cannot trust what you're seeing in the mirror. No, no, no. no not at all. Are a real, real what, is there anything that, like, with your clients, is there anything specific that you tell them, like, when they're going to their suit designer or something? Is there anything specific you tell them that they need to ask for or look for or anything like that? It depends on the girl, you know, yeah. like, if they have, like, um, like breast augmentation with their boobs like super wide and spread like i'll make sure that they tell them that they need to come in um if they have glutes like the girl at tampa pro where they just got super lean and now that inner part of their mm -hmm. glute where the butt crack is like i'll make sure that they tell them that their glutes are very lean and that they yeah. have more fabric there if they don't see it already a good suit designer is going to kind of see all of these things um, something else too, is that the girls, just like you said, with the front, there's a lot of discussion about how high that front needs to be, especially for like my master's clients with C-section scars mm -hmm. and things like that. Sometimes it's a little too high, mm -hmm. <laughs> like they're trying, they're trying mm -hmm. to cover it and it's almost like they're drawing more attention Absolutely. to it. So those are really like the big, the big hitters. But again, like most of the time, a good suit designer, like I don't even have to say these things. They already see them, but the girls will say like, what's important to you? Or like, what do I need to hide? What do I need to accentuate? And it really just depends on what they look like. Yeah. What, what scars they have or breast augmentation or leanness or things like that. And I, that's something too, with the, like the C-section scar you just mentioned, I try to tell girls that girls come to me all the time, really subconscious about that. I'm like, to be honest with you, I said, when you get your tan on and all that stuff, you're, you're not going to see it. You really it's, don't. No. You really don't. Like, I don't really see it until, like, I'm, like, in the front of the stage. Like, if yeah. I'm, like, in the pre-judging and I'm more towards the back of the stage that morning at the booth or something and I see a girl on stage, I'm like, oh, yeah, she looks pretty. No, don't notice nothing no. at all. At the finals, if I'm more towards, like, the front, I'm like, oh, she has a C-section scar. But it doesn't look bad. It's just like, yeah. oh, cool. Like, she's a mom. She looks yeah. freaking awesome. Like, well, it is well, not well, pull away. Too, especially in bikini is that you're you're – twisting to the side so right. you don't like, that. like figure yeah. and this is across the board usually with figure girls they they i tend to do the the suit bottoms a little higher anyway because it helps us to be out the waistline from their front pose right so yeah. the, the way that that's one of the big mistakes i see a lot of figure competitors make is that they make their feet in the front the way low and it actually really lengthens that elongates their torso yeah. yeah 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 so a little bit higher in the front is actually better yeah um, and we cover up most of the C-section scar that way because with figure, you are posing straight on with the front pose. So right. it is a little bit more visible that way. But usually with the figure bottoms, it's not a problem. You know, yeah, you have a little bit more forgiveness there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And going higher is actually better because then they can get the hip straps up a little higher and it makes that be into the waist a lot better too. Yeah, um, for sure. But yeah, I, I would say... All of the things that you said, one of my own pet peeves as far as the tops is concerned is when girls have really long connectors in the center. Right in the here. center. Yeah. <sighs> drives me nuts. Yeah. Or when the when the suit designers don't like the connector flips a lot. Yeah. Like if it's one of those little small jewels, so you have to like almost sew the the sides of the fabric to the connectors so that yep. it's not flipping around. It drives yep. me crazy. So here's crazy. another tip on that too, because that happens with, with my girls. If you want, if you want it sewn in, we'll sew it in. So just yeah. ask, ask for yeah. it to be sewn in. If you forget to ask safety pin, uh, you, can put, you can put a safety pin on the back of the, of the, of the, the strap right there and safety. You won't even see the safety pins. It's up against you. And so that's good. That's see brilliant. It. So it'll, that's it'll brilliant. keep it in place. We did that with Devin's top because her first one was, or second one or whatever it was, it was flipping. So we just took the safety pins on the inside and that set it straight and flat against her. So a good that, coach always has safety pins on their bag. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always have safety pins with me. Always. Always. <laughs> always. I always have my, my purse and safety pins in the purse. Yep. <laughs> yes, Something I else you can do too. I wish I had my suit sitting here right now, but what I do with mine is I actually, um, 
take the, the, the strap, the top strap that goes around here, and I weave it through. So it's not attached on the outside. It actually weaves through. Cool. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm like, I'm looking to see if I have a connector sitting here. I can show you what I mean. <laughs> but then that way it just sits on the, on the front of the, of the strap. And it right. doesn't, it, does, it has it, it just weaves through. like a, It's like not, a, right. It, yeah. It's not connected on either side. If right. That makes sense. Yes. Some girls like the really dainty little te teeny tiny ones in the center too. And that's better to do the weave through on that one because then the connector won't break either. Sometimes there's a lot of tension there and it, okay. can, break, it can break the connector. So if you weave it through the really tiny ones, like Yulia's one that ha likes the really tiny ones. So that makes sense for her frame though. Yeah. 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 And it's dainty and it's pretty and everything, but you gotta be careful right. because they're, they're not as stable either. They're, they're going, they're going to break easier. So that's you know, something you can do with that is you can weave it through. So then that way it's it won't, it won't be pulling on it. So just some See, little things you learn. Little things that you don't think about. <laughs> that's right. And, and this is why you need a custom suit. This is why you exactly. need a custom suit. <laughs> exactly. Sean's couture. Know, right? <laughs> Cha-ching! <laughs> we got, we, we got the plug a, right there. The QR code. I know, right? Where are we going? Right here. Right to wherever. <laughs> it's in the description Somewhere. box. Before. <laughs> right. But no, that's why we do custom. And that's also why these suits cost it, you know, more than your typical bikini because we got to go through all this stuff. We got to make sure we do it right. You know, we got to make sure that we account for all those things that could be a potential issue down the road. You and know, I will say, if you take care of your suit, that thing will last you. Like it will last you at least a few years if you take Absolutely. care of your suit the right way. Like, I, you know, as soon as I get home from a show, one of the first things I do is wash the suit. Mm -hmm. You know, like I don't want the tan sitting on there. Yep. Nothing good can be done with it just sitting on there and eating away at the fabric and the yep. stones and whatnot, um, laying it flat to dry, keeping it in a container, in a mm -hmm. container, not the bags that they come in. Like yep. there's Swarovski crystal stones on these things. We yes. have to think about that. Like we, if you're just throwing it in a bag, like I always pack my suit, my carry on, <laughs> yep. not only, not only just to have it with me, just in case something happens, but to protect the suit. Yeah. So I have these little, I have one sitting right here. So these are the, hang on, let me grab it. Okay. These are the little cutie cases that I do my suits, right? So it's like a little luggage. It's a little piece of luggage and you can put two different suits inside of it because it just opens up like a little piece. Of That's it. really cute. So and it's one, really, one I like here, how thin it is. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So yep. it's easy to, Boom. yep. Yep. I think I can buy one of those ones. That's I know, right? really easy to travel with. <laughs> it is. You know, it goes right in your, in your carry-on. Like I said, you can fit two suits in there and you're good to go, you know? Um, yeah. They used to do those cup cases. I think some of the some of the companies still do the cup cases, but the cup cases are big and they're like round and they don't fit into like a typical bag. Like this, you can stick right inside your carry-on or whatever, you know? That's really cool. I like yeah. that a lot. Mm -hmm. So all the, the things. little things, yeah. all the things, <laughs> um, I have one, uh, it's so funny. There's this one figure suit that, that I made years ago that it's been resold probably five times. And it's like, every time a girl wears it, they'll send me photos. You know, so, it's yours. Yeah. They'll send me photos of them in it. I know it's mine too. It's got my, my lining on the inside and stuff like that too. But like, they'll send me photos of it. So I've seen like five different girls wear the same suit over the course of how pretty many cool years. though. So it's cool to see that happen, you know, and, and I tell holding people, up. Yeah, I tell people, like, when you invest in a suit, even if you decide to not compete again, you can sell it and get almost all of your money back. You can. Yeah. I mean. I sold my first suit and when I needed to buy my second one, and I yep. got a good chunk of it for my second one, so. And it was yeah, when I when I started, my first one that I bought was from a lady that made ice dancer costumes. That's what she did. Wow. And I think I spent, I think it was like 480 or something like that on it. And that was a figure suit, and that was back, you know, 15 years ago at this point now. Um so that was about average for figure suits back then. And I wow. think I sold it. I think I sold it for like 400 bucks. So that's pretty good. Yeah, Dang, was, girl. I got almost all of it back. Cause I, you know, you got to take care of your suits too. That's something else that people, I don't, I don't rent suits because a lot of times when they come back, I can't re-rent them again. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So people, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's a really rough, a rough business. I don't, it's very like every once in a while somebody gets into a pinch, I'll rent them a suit, but I just don't advertise it because it's just nine times out of ten when I get the suit back, I can't, I can't, I can't re resell it or re. If you get anything. the suit back too, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girls just don't send them back, or they come back and they didn't even. They're wash ripped, them. and they've got glue ripped. all over them. They've lost a bunch of stones. I'm like, I can't even. Like, it's going to cost me more to repair this than to make a new suit. You know what exactly. I mean? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Anyhow. So, 
<laughs> so that was that, that was question. a tangent. I know, there's that question. Since we're on this right now, we can go to, I've got like two other questions. Let me see what I got here. Um, so one of the questions was, can you talk about what app you all use to track macros to ensure most accuracy? So what do you use? I use my fitness pal, always uh, yep. the premium version. Mm -hmm. um, all of my clients use my fitness pal. I know there's some out there that are free and things like that. That's just not what I'm proficient in. Yep. Um, my fitness pal has a lot of cool tools that I don't know. It just makes it easy. And I love that it kind of remembers my meals and it mm -hmm. just makes things, the more you use it, the more friendly it is for you. Yes. Um, I'm not sure what the other apps are called that are free and things like that. I know, like I said, I don't use them or I don't allow my clients to use them. So uh, my fitness pal is definitely the best. Yeah. Before I started working with Jamie, I was using this app called Lose It. And I think it's, I think it's probably that still is out one. there. Yep. Um, yep. But then I switched. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. I don't really remember a whole lot about it because I wasn't really deep into it. I was just tracking loosely. Um, but then when I started working with Jamie, I started using the My Fitness Pal, and I haven't used anything else since. And like you said, the more you use it, the better it gets. Um, I think one of the biggest things that people have a hard time with macros at first is that they just it's just overwhelming, um, and they don't know. Yes. You know how to fit this there, what there, what you know, whatever. With My Fitness Pal, it helps you to organize things a whole lot easier. Um, and for me, it takes the guesswork out too, because pretty much every food out there, if you scan the freaking barcode, it's going to be in there, you know? So right. at the end of the day, when you're, when you're having these chaotic moments, like we talked about at the beginning of this, um, and you're having these chaotic weeks and things like that, if you're just out and about, you can scan a food at the gas station or something like that, and you can fit it into your macros, you know? Makes it so, so easy. It makes things easy. Yes. And if there's yes. certain things that you eat all the time, like you said, you can create your own foods in there. Um, put all the information that you need in there, your sodium, all that kind of stuff. Um, so like you said, the more that you use it, the better it gets, the friendlier it is for you. Um, they have a lot of different um, like exercise stuff and things like that in there too. I don't use any of that. I just use the no. tracking part of it, but they have a lot of, there's a lot of resources in there too. So, you actually have to be careful. You know, the more that, that you want to get into track it, your you exercise in there. And if you track your water in there, it can adjust your macros. So make sure that yeah. you have that setting turned off. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I, I love my fitness pal. I've used it for over 10 years now. It is such a great tool. Yeah. And yet do pay attention because this happened a few weeks ago. It was like when I just got into off season where they did, they did like a software update. And I remember Jamie saying for a couple days, she's like, for a couple days, your, your activity was turned on. I go, well, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't touch it. I didn't change anything in there. So apparently this happened across the board. Yeah, my fitness pal is a great yeah. tool, but it does have glitches. Yeah, and yeah. That's why I mean, anytime I make an adjustment with my clients and their macros, there's another portion where I write it somewhere so that they can cross check because sometimes I'll save it, especially if I'm on a plane and yeah. it will not save it. And then they're yes. like, hey, I see that it was changed, but it doesn't reflect that in my fitness pal. Yep. So it has, a, it's a great tool, but it has its flaws. Just like anything else. Just like Absolutely. anything else. You're going you're to have little things. So just pay attention. Technology. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yep. just pay attention. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, in general, there's a reason why it's probably the, the number one tracker across the board because it just has all the, the bells and whistles that you need. You know what I mean? So yes, makes things very easy. Yep. Yep. Um, and then we can kind of go into this one a little bit. We get we get it a lot as far as this con this um, question is concerned. And we, an we answered it before, too. But is it if you want to add something we haven't talked about before, is it possible possible to be competitive in the IAPB as a natural? Yeah, we talk about this one all the time. Yeah, and I, I, it's so sad to me that this question keeps coming up because clearly people think that it's not possible. And yes, it is possible. It's just you have to be realistic. You have to be very realistic with yourself. It is very possible, but you have to put in ample amount of time and patience and dedication to this sport. Yep. And you, when you're natural, you have to be, we've talked about this, on, on, on plan. You have to eat your macros. You yes. have to focus on your training. You unfortunately have no leeway, right? You have That's no right. help. So you fully have to rely on your own set of skills and discipline in order to meet your plans so that you can make changes. But it is 100% possible. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you have to also under, understand too, like what you just said is right. Um, it's going to take you more time um, then somebody who's enhanced, like I said, I said this at CCT, CCTS, the biggest thing is, is that you're just going to hit your potential faster. You're going to recover faster. You're going to hit all of those things faster um, when you're on enhancements versus when you're not. So you have to be more patient when you're not. Um, and then you also have to remember that everybody has a different definition for natural. 
Everybody That's has true. a different definition for natural, right? Yeah. So some people, and I've been through this, I did a whole live on this. I put a question box into my, my Instagram feed and I asked people, what is your definition of natural? And I got hundreds of responses and every one of them was different. different. Every single one of them was different. What's so, your definition of natural? My definition of natural is somebody who is not on anything, I would say illegal, if that makes okay. sense. Because so TR, TRT yes. to you is not enhanced. I believe it's not. I, if you're under the, if you're under the, um, I believe, or I believe it is natural. If that makes sense, I believe yes. it's because you're under the, the supervision of a doctor to right? get your natural Correct. level. Yes, to should be with bio identical hormones. Right, I, I agree. I'm that person that if it's if it's not something that you can't get at the supplement store, you have to go through a source to get it then you are not natural. I agree with you. Yes. So, um, because that's the thing too. A lot of people think that because if you're on TRT, you're not natural anymore. It's like, nah, I, I think that, and I, I, again, it's, it's a gray area. If you think that that's the case and you, you think that, that by being on these hormone replacements and things like that, that makes you not natural. That's your, that's, that's okay. your, that's, that's your definition. That's your, that's your opinion. Absolutely. That's your definition. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So, you know, and I think, um, cause one of the things that people talk about a lot too is, um, Daraja. Daraj is natural. Yep. She, she says she's natural, all of that, but yep. she automatically has, she is on some HRT stuff. I don't know exactly what it is, but she, she does produce more testosterone naturally in her body. Um, and she's mentioned that. So, you know, naturally she's naturally, she's more gifted than most people when it comes I was going to say, like, we're talking thing. about Daraja. She is a genetic freak. Correct. Like, you, have, you have to remember that. Right. 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 <laughs> it's, so it's insane. you know, there's, there's, there's certain people that they, God just gave them a gift, <laughs> you know, but at the, same time, at the same time, she has other things that she has to deal with in order to, you know, in order to be uh, competitive with her endometriosis and things like that too. So yeah. every plus comes with a minus. You know, so you got to remember that just because you're gifted in one area doesn't mean that you don't have your own challenges, right? So And just because you go on drugs does not mean you're going to be more competitive either. Nope. Because all it does is it just maximizes your potential. So if you have a shitty shape to begin with, guess what? It's just going to make you bigger and shittier. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> just saying. Yes. So <laughs> I know that there are certain people that are actually natural figure Olympians. So I, I, I do know them personally. So, you know, there, there's, there's, it's possible. Yes. Now, the majority of people, I will say this, I will say the majority of successful pros are not. By my definition <laughs> of taking things that are not under doctor's supervision or something that you can't get at the supplement store, they are not natural. Correct. Um, but uh, it, it is possible. It is yes. possible. You know, Just realistic. Just be yep. realistic. Yes. And something absolutely. that, you know, that Jessica, uh, Jessica Wilson mentioned this uh, during her presentation too. The older that you get, the easier it is to be natural because you get that muscle maturity, right? Yes. You know, you get I that. love, I hate, well, I love or I hate when like masters competitors first time will reach out to me and they're like, am I too old to start? I'm yeah. like, no, you're the perfect person. I know. You have mature muscle. Yes. You're going to have newbie gains and then you're going to have mature muscle. Like it, they're in a really good spot. Yep. Sometimes, and you know, I say that all the time. I'm like, sometimes when you're older and you're natural, you can hang with the younger girls better because you never took any of those supplementations. So you don't have like the graininess. You don't have that, that, that drug body look, but you have the muscle maturity that you would have if you were in your twenties and took stuff. Yes. So mm -hmm. Just saying, I there's, there's I you know, that. there's pluses and minuses to everything, but you know, I think uh, good example is Angela. Angela is 52. Um, Angela Rosselli. Yep. Uh huh. Uh huh. And she's natural. Um, yep. She, I think she's on like HRT type stuff thing, that kind of thing too. But uh, normal again, when you're in your 50s as a female, yeah, I can still, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I still consider that as being natural. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and so dense. she and, is. She's been, she's been Beautiful. bodybuilding. I think she said like 30 years, something yeah, like that. She's, yes. She's been, she's been training. I know over like 25 years. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it's like, you know, there's, there's pluses and minuses to everything. Um, can you do it naturally? Yes. Is it going to take you longer? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta be patient. Yep. And Absolutely. You, you can be successful, but you gotta be patient. You gotta be patient with it. So, yep. um, and again, like I said, going back to, you gotta also understand what your definition of natural is too. Right. 
Right. So that's it's important to have that that own monologue with yourself and, you know, assess what you think is right or what's right for you and yep. continue on that journey. Yeah. Another one, too. Like and again, you go back to these athletes like, you know, Aaron Stern is a lifetime natural. And you look yep. at her when she was at her biggest in her figure days and she's massive as far as muscle Huge. is concerned. Huge. Yes. You yep. know, that's just her natural g genetic ability, though. I mean, she actually qu almost qualified for the Olympics, like in high jump. That was, her, wow. that was her sport. So she missed it by like, I don't know. I don't know. She, she said it once. She did the trials twice and she missed it. But um, the Olympic trials. But that's the thing. She's been training forever. You mm -hmm. know, she just has that uh, that discipline and that that just her mature muscle, you yes. know, yes, from right. years of training, different styles of training. I mean, Aaron's yep. now gone from what high jumping to now figure then to bikini, bikini. Yep. successful in every single one of those things that she did by yep. pure discipline, pivoting, understanding mm -hmm. what she needed at the time. And she is still training. She's not doing the Olympia anymore, not competing anymore. And she's brought in down her training. She likes more of like the functional training. Mm -hmm. Um, things like that. And, and she's still finding what works best for her. But what's something she's always said that she loves is training. She yep. loves just being in the gym. And it's cool to see over the years how she's pivoted for her interest and what she wanted in that moment yep. and how she's changed her physique so much. But yep. she, it's she, one thing she continues to do is train. Yep. And be disciplined and consistent. Yeah. That's it. So, you know, and I think to wrap that question up too, is that a lot of people see, you know, just the highlights of this, of this particular sport, but the people that have been really successful at it have been doing it for years and Absolutely. years and years and yeah. years have been athletes their whole lives. You know, the, the ones that are really super successful at this didn't just fall into it and didn't just start it yesterday. Didn't yeah. do, didn't do one show and went pro, you know what I mean? They've, they've been training for a long period of time. You just yes. don't see all those. You see the highlights. You just don't see all that stuff in the background all the time. Right. You know? Right. So, um, so yeah, that's completely, completely possible. But again, time, that's patience, it. discipline, consistency. We always go back yes. to all of that. So anyway, so with that, um, let's wrap this up for this week. What are you up to this week? Just staying home and getting fo focused? I am. Yeah. I am just working a lot. I'm really, really busy right now, but it's keeping yeah. me out of trouble and training. And yeah, that's that's it. Good. Keeping it simple. Good. Keeping my stress yep. low. I know. Same over here. Going to try and get back. Just I'm already starting to get back to you know status quo kind of thing. Um, Good. You know, dance home, recovering, and all that. We don't, we haven't had any snow in a couple of days, so we're good with that. <laughs> Cross yes. the fingers, right? Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm hoping to get a couple of good solid weeks under my belt in the next couple of weeks. We have the, I mentioned we do have the, um, the posing clinic that we have coming up and I think, what is the weekend? February 5th, what is the weekend? Is, I can't remember what the weekend it is. Let me look at the calendar because it's free. So it's, I think it's the weekend of the 17th, like the 16th, 17th, 18th weekend. I believe that's what it is. But it's the Victory Imposing Clinic. We do it every year here in Virginia. It's a free clinic. Um, they do um, women on one day, men on the other. Um, and they set it up at the shop gym in, in Ashburn. So that's coming up. And then after that, we have the Arnold. Um, and then we're rolling. Um, we've got a new show here, like right down the street from my house at the end of March. So that'll be good too. Um, and before all of that, we, we launched the CCTS 2025 Super Early Bird <laughs> next yeah. week. <laughs> so there's that. Season is underway. <laughs> it is already. Already. Yes. So um, I saw a meme the other day. It was like, so next week is still January. <laughs> so yeah, January feels like it's it's lasted a long time, but that's a good thing. We needed it. <laughs> yeah. We needed to slow down a little bit for a second. <laughs> Just for a second. Because Just a second. All those other months went way too fast. <laughs> it, they did. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. last, the end of last year flew by. Yeah, <laughs> so sure did. I'm enjoying the slowness right now. Yes. Sure. So with that, guys, if you have any other questions that you'd like us to answer, feel free to type those into the comments. You can send them to us through DMs and things like that too. We feel, we like to um, always do those as much as possible. Uh, we'll come back again next week and have another topic for you. I'm sure something something crazy will happen. <laughs> we'll uh, God, I hope not, but I'm sure <laughs> something something will happen. Something. It always does. Yes. Um, and with that, thank you for joining us again for episode 22 of Behind the Bikini. And like, subscribe. I didn't say at the beginning. Shoot. Subscribe, like, comment, all of the fun stuff. <laughs> and, and we'll see you back here again next week. Bye. Bye.